Welcome back here to Christ Church Cathedral in Grafton. It's great to have you with us, and particularly great as we anticipate that soon we might be able to have a congregation back inside the building as well. It's Pentecost Sunday, a day when we celebrate the vitality and the presence of the Spirit of Jesus within the church, within the Christian community. And so you'll obviously notice those themes coming through. As we gather for worship this Pentecost Sunday, it's also the Sunday that occurs during the week for national reconciliation. And so, as always, we acknowledge that the cathedral stands on the land of the Bunjalung Nation. We acknowledge their long presence and custodianship of this sacred land. And we feel privileged to now be living alongside them in the great land of the Spirit. So let's uh, begin with our introit appropriately called Spirit of God. We join our voices with the choir and the other angels as we sing Holy Spirit, Go Before Us, together in Song 420.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, and we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of the bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the Holy promised Holy Spirit, Christ's gift to his people. We make him known to the world. As we wait in silence, fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us, us with, with your spirit. spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us, us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us, us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill, fill us, us with, with your spirit. spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us, us with your spirit. of truth comes to convict of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Let us then open our hearts and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, Glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. 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 
Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite us in your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each other. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medians, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Everything begins in darkness. Chaos. Tohu Vabohu, writes the ancient Hebrew poet. Formless, empty, yet immense swirling seas. The deep, or sometimes translated the abyss. Then something happens. Ruach Elohim. Christians like to translate that phrase as the Spirit of God. Jews prefer to say a wind from God. I want to suggest it's actually better translated as a powerful wind, an out of this world wind. In everyday terms, although it kind of mixes the metaphor, we would say a hell of a storm, right off the scale. All that we are today has its origins and its meaning in those ancient words that open the Bible, which we share with our Jewish friends, who of course observed Shavuot, Pentecost, on Thursday. If I might paraphrase the opening paragraph of Genesis, I'd do it like this. God was there at the start. God created everything. It was a mess. An amazing storm came through, hovering above the formless, empty chaos. Then there was light. God spoke. That's not just a mythic description of the origins of everything. It's also a way, a piece of poetry which describes our present reality. It almost sounds a bit like COVID-19. But more importantly, it also indicates our destiny, where we are going. Today is Pentecost, the Greek word for 50, also known as the 8th day of creation. Let that sink in. Seven days of creation. What what happens on day eight? Well, that's the space we're in. We live in day eight. Today is a time when we celebrate the disturbing and yet renewing presence of the Spirit of God. And today, we pray for that Spirit to hover over the chaos of our broken world and our crumbling lives until the light appears. As we observe this great and 50th day of Easter, let me offer a simple paradigm, a kind of advanced summary 
for the meaning of Easter and what I'm going to be talking about briefly. So after the next two sentences, you can switch off. The presence of Jesus among us is the proof of the resurrection. And equally, our commitment to compassionate action is the proof that the spirit of Jesus is among us. Well, let me just unpack that a wee bit. The idea of the spirit of Jesus present in the lives of individual Christians and of the church community was a major theme in the way that Paul understood the meaning of Jesus. He hardly ever refers to the life of Jesus and almost never quotes anything Jesus actually said, but he repeatedly refers to the spirit as the real lived experience of the risen Jesus active in the life of the church. One familiar example, which is often used in church services today, is this passage from 1 Corinthians 12. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one spirit. My personal favourite in that kind of genre may be another line from a little bit later on in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. So it was written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, but the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. For Paul and for us, the spirit present among us is the proof that Jesus has been raised and has gone ahead of us into God, into the future, into eternal love. Indeed, in all of his letters and all of his recorded arguments, of which there were many, Paul never once refers to an empty tomb. We find that, of course, in the Gospels, but they were written many decades after Paul is dead. For Paul, what matters is to have been drawn into the Easter life of Jesus through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of Jesus, which is given to us, says Paul, when we're baptised. Sorry, I just must have touched the screen a tiny wee bit there. So for Paul, Pentecost is, of course, the, the, and for us, um, we, as we look at Pentecost, we're standing at the end of Easter. Easter does not finish when we find an empty tomb. Easter hasn't ended when Jesus ascends into heaven. Easter has really only fully happened when we have a community of people where the Spirit is found active among them and in them, hovering over our chaos absorbing our darkness, shaping our formlessness, illuminating our darkness and filling our emptiness. So today, on the Festival of the Spirit, we know the meaning of Easter and in the experience of the Spirit of Jesus among us, we know the reality of his resurrection. But there's another half to my kind of brief summary of what Pentecost means. And it's about acting with compassion. In the mission statement for the cathedral on the website, we describe ourselves as a community which has been acting with compassion in the heart of Grafton since 1842. When that description is true, and from time to time it is, but when we, when we live up to that description, then we have proof that the Spirit of Jesus is indeed active among us. It's seen in our compassion. It's seen in our commitment to roll up our sleeves and make a difference in our world, in our community, in our neighbourhood and in our families. Jesus was first of all 
a person of compassion. And some of the miracle stories actually mention that when Jesus saw the person, when he heard the woman's situation, he was filled with compassion. Um, he, 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 he felt for their situation. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. He made the blind see. He fed the hungry. He talked of a time of liberty and salvation and freedom. And he had time and compassion for those on the margins of their own communities. One simple picture image, Jesus sitting by the well, talking with the woman from Samaria. How many boundaries did he break in that simple act of compassionate presence with a woman who'd been pushed to the margins of her own village? As Jesus' people, his spirit of compassion will be evident among us as well. One point in Galatians, Paul describes this as the fruit of the Spirit. So when the Spirit is in our lives, this is the kind of fruit which we will see. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This does not mean we always get it right. Nor does it mean that all those other times when we fail, we should beat up on ourselves. But it, that does suggest that when we get it right, this is what the presence of the Spirit of Jesus among us looks like. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We should expect to see evidence of the Spirit of Jesus at work among us, and we do. We saw it during the fires last summer, except it lasted much longer than just summer. We've seen it in the care and support given to people during the pandemic. We see it in the op shop volunteers. We see it in the cathedral pantry. We see it in every act of compassion and care. So my prayer for you is that the disturbing and renewing presence of the Spirit will continue to be your experience so that we can never doubt the resurrection of Jesus and never lose sight of what it means for us to be Jesus' people here and now. God was there at the start. God is here now. God will be here in the future. It may be a mess, but an amazing spirit storm is swirling around us, hovering above the formless, empty chaos. There will be light. God has spoken. Hallelujah. So let's stand and share in our affirmation of faith with it is a responsorial affirmation of faith which I've borrowed from our friends in the Uniting Church this week. There are diverse gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through people in different ways, but it is the same God whose purpose is achieved through them all. Each one of us is given a gift by the Spirit, and there is no gift without its corresponding service. There is one ministry of Christ, and in this ministry we all share. Together, we are the body of Christ and, and individually members of it. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. 
Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us, us with your, with your spirit. spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. Keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill, fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Praying especially for Sue Cotter, Betty Ford, Brian Holly, Joan Ma, John Moses and Val Rogers. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. As we remember Reg Graham, who died this past week, along with Fiona Copeland, Vera Kidd, Doug Barnier and Harold Grebert, whose year's mind occurs this week. So we ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us, us with your spirit. spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer and, and make, make us, us one in heart and mind to serve, serve you with joy, joy forever. forever. Now please join me as we say the Cathedral Prayer together. Living, Living and eternal, eternal Christ, bless the ministry of this cathedral as a place of pilgrimage and prayer. May our doors always be open to pilgrims. May our hearts always be open to one another. And may our minds always be open to you, truth. Draw us deeply into the mystery of your life, your death and your resurrection. Now, now and always. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given us the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. Our honourable hymn is Come Down, O Love Divine, which is 398 together in song.
Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Today, we give you thanks that in fulfilment of your promise, you pour forth your Spirit upon us, filling us with gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim, <clears throat> we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and singing. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, 
unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Just to highlight a couple of notices before we wrap up for our service this morning. If you were not quick enough to catch it before our 9 o'clock service this morning, I do hope you'll have a chance to go onto the website and check the diocesan Pentecost event with contributions from all around the diocese, from every parish and every school. And there'll be a, uh, there is already a link to that, but we'll make sure the link is even easier for you to follow from our This Sunday 
page on the Cathedral website. Starting this week, we're beginning a series of what, of what is called the Pro-Future Faith Program. It's about a faith which is focused on the future rather than the past or rather than denying the future. And it's also a program that looks at the intersection of science and uh, ecology and faith and Christian identity and mission. Um, it'll all, all be done online, of course, during this period of time, and it's a mix of video and, and discussion using Zoom, of course. So we'd love you to be part of that, but in order to be part of that, you just need to have the link to join in on the Zoom discussions every Thursday night from 7.30 to 9 for the next few weeks. So just drop me an email and we'll make sure you get the link. Looking ahead to next Sunday, we move back into the Pentecost season, but the first um, Sundays after Pentecost, as it were, and the first Sunday after Pentecost is, of course, Trinity Sunday. Our guest uh, priest and preacher for that Sunday will be Canon Zoe Everingham. So we look forward to welcoming Zoe to be with us next Sunday. And we'll also have a Dean's Forum virtually next Sunday morning. And that will be looking at the parables of Jesus. Now the one question that everybody has been asking is not, how is the church going? How's your money going? The one question people are asking is, when can we come back to church? When can we come back to the cathedral? On Thursday afternoon, I was phoning around my list of people that I'm touching base with, and I was saying, oh, it could be a few weeks yet. It might even be August. And by seven o'clock that night, the Premier, well, the news had leaked that the Premier was going to announce um, that as of tomorrow, the 1st of June, um, churches will be able to have up to 50 people, provided they can meet all of the public health order specifications and, and that they have permission from their bishop to resume services. Parish Council will be meeting on Wednesday night to approve an application to the bishop for the cathedral to resume holding public services possibly as early as next Sunday, but it will just depend how quickly we can um, move through the approval process. We've done a lot of the work. Uh, we just now need to get the forms from the bishop, send them back in first thing Thursday morning, possibly have approval for next Sunday, otherwise for sure by the week after. That will require you to phone the parish office before Thursday afternoon finishes and book a place like a fancy restaurant. Well, it is. It's the best restaurant in Grafton. So you're going to have to phone the parish office through Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, check if there are any places available, um, and, uh, and if so, Roger will record your name and your contact number so that if, God forbid, there was uh, somebody who was at the cathedral who was contagious, uh, then the health people can track everybody else who was in the building at the same time. All right, there will also be no singing of hymns. And the good news is we're not allowed to pass the collection plate around. All right, but we will find other ways to separate your money from you for the sake of God's work. Now let's uh, join in our final hymn, our mission hymn, Filled with the Spirit's Power. <laughs>
us pray. Giver of life and love, we thank you that in this heavenly banquet you invigorate and renew us. Living in the unity of the Spirit, may we boldly use your gifts to continue your work in the world. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. When with Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit, now the flame of heaven rests on every believer, strong and weak, women and men, tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known, source of freedom, giver of life. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. I invite you to come and take a candle and light it from the Paschal candle flame before the final part of the service. So I'll do the ones close here behind me first. And I'll put the others here on a little stand so you can come and light your candle. This is the reverse of the Easter Vigil. I'm going to put the Christ candle. Grab a candle, set fire to For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts, and we have prayed that the power which was at work in, when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in Grafton, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting God to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other when social distancing allows and grow together in love? We will. Will, will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to those in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your heart beats with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. So the flame remains with you. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples 
and we invite the same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world where the wild things are. May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life she gives. Amen. May the spirit who overshadowed the virgin when the eternal spirit came among, you, among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.